Hey, let's get right into it. I've got a special guest joining me again today. Her name is Brianna Zanoni. And let me give you a proper introduction on Brianna. She is honestly a phenomenal person. I've gotten a chance to know her uh, for several months now as she's been education, educating me along my own uh, personal financial, financial journey. And she comes from the financial industry. She's been in here for a decade plus. She was originally working in the banking industry, but then you know she found the light and moved over into this line of, of work after she found that she was able to touch and improve the lives of people more effectively by helping them become financially free. Um, and she's at, the, at her core, she's an educator. I, like I said, she's been educating me, which is why I want to bring her in. Um, she breaks down rather difficult concepts into something that's more digestible uh, and conceptually understandable for the majority of us people. Um, and most importantly, she's a mom. She's got four kids. Uh, I know I've gotten to see a few of them, uh, knowing that you know I've got one myself. She's got them ranging from seven to like eight months old. I don't know how the hell she does it, uh, but honestly, an awesome person. So I'm so excited to be bringing her uh, to meet with us all today. So, Brianna. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing so good. Thanks so much for that amazing introduction, Dan. I really appreciate it. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, hey, so I'm, I'm glad we could get started here. And uh, I just need to shut off one of my things because it was uh, providing feedback on my end. Uh, but listen, the, the, the reason I wanted to pull you in, um, I'm focused on helping people better understand how to be smarter financially. And on a quick little story about myself, I, uh, I started at PNG many moons ago. I've, I've got gray in the hair here. Um, and for like a decade plus, I was maxing out my 401k. I wasn't just putting in the minimum amount uh, to get the employer contribution. No, I was maxing the hell out of that. And I thought I was doing a smart thing um, because at that point in time, I was young, single, making good money in the corporate world. And it wasn't in decided to educate myself. Like I started reading like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and that led me down a rabbit hole of all other things that I should understand a little bit more about personal finances that I recognize that I was making a big mistake. Um, and because I'm still kind of greener in this area of really how big of a mistake and you have a decade plus of experience with this, I was hoping I could kind of grill you today. Um, I'm going to act like I'm basically all of the companies that sell 401ks and tell you why it's the wrong thing uh, for us not to be utilizing a 401k. Uh, so hopefully that's okay with you, because uh, yes, I, I, I think this could be a really beneficial conversation for, for everybody involved. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds great. Sounds great, Dan. <laughs> awesome. So um, if, if you could, um, I, I know you said you had some additional, like kind of a quiz you wanted to test me on of how will I know a 401k or, um, you know, kind of give me a dialogue of it. We want to keep it as engaging as possible for people. Um, so, so please uh, let me know where you want to get started. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, as you said, I've got over a decade experience in this. I meet with a lot of people who do have a 401k, have contributed a lot of money to it. And, you know, when I when I sit down with clients and they say, oh, I've got a 401k, I'm like, great, you know, you're saving some money, you're putting some money aside. That is phenomenal. There's a lot of people who aren't looking towards the future. They aren't planning on saving anything. They really have no plan at all to be able to stop working. So yeah. the fact that people are doing something is a great start. Like that is phenomenal. But when I sit down with a lot of my clients, I'll ask them, you know, I'd like you to rate yourself one to 10 on how well you know the 401k. Like one, meaning you really just know it's called a 401k. It's supposed to be for retirement. That's really it. A 10, meaning like, you know, the 401k inside and out, you could teach a class on it. Yeah. And where would you guess most of my clients would rate themselves from a one to a 10 when I sit down with them? Yeah. Um, you know, if, if I add this on so people can actually see, um, oh, I'm trying to add your little deck here. I would say the majority of people would be uh, probably in the two <laughs> range. You're, you're um, absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I get like a one to a three for most people on how well they know it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, candidly, I'd say, oh gosh, back in my days where I thought I was brilliant maxing out the 401k, um, I thought I was, you know, hot stuff. Turns out I was probably a, a one or a two. Now I feel like I'm a lot well versed, but still it's uh, something that, um, yeah, I wish I was a little bit better on. 
Yeah, absolutely. And most people do, you know, we're, we're told by our coworkers, by our HR department, by our company, like, oh, hey, you've got this benefit. You know, you don't want to miss out on this benefit that you have. And so absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so really, why, why do people have a 401k? And it's because there's a couple of benefits that we, we get from having it. So yeah. that first yeah. one, free money, I am all about free money. Usually it's a ratio, a dollar to dollar or a percentage yep. that people are getting this free money that's a benefit to them. So that's one of the reasons why people have a 401k. Yep. Another one yep. is for tax savings. You're going to save money on taxes now. Sounds super great. Two to 10% that I don't have to pay now. Like, absolutely. It's yep. a great, it's a great deal. Yes. Why wouldn't I? Uh, the next one's retirement. Oh, if you have a 401k, you're going to be able to retire at 65. This is something that I hear very often. And then lastly, one of the other main reasons is because taxes are going to be lower in retirement. These are some of the common things that I hear on why somebody has a 401k. But in reality, when we look at the 401k, the 401k is made up of mutual funds. So it's in variable accounts, stocks, things that are going to go up and down with the market. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when we look up the word variable, it means unreliable, untrustworthy, where we don't really know what's going to happen to it. And so if I had an unreliable car, I'd probably want to get a new one. When yeah. we think of the word reliable for our retirement accounts, like that's not really a good word to associate with that. So Certainly. that's just right, right. So that's kind of in its core. But there's two main rules to the 401k. There's the 59 and a half rule, and then there's yeah. the 73 RMD rule. And so I want to really go over these because these are two of the things that people people are like, oh, I know the 59 and a half rule. I, I, I understand that. But let's like really get into it and what exactly that means for ourselves and our money in our future. Yeah. So, so first off, 59 and a half rule. What this means is that if we take money out of our 401k before 59 and a half, we're going to be tagged, we're going to be penalized 10%. And then we're also going to have to pay taxes on that. Right now, taxes are about 30%. You know, sometimes we have federal and state taxes as well. It can be much higher than that, but it's about a 40% for most people. Okay. So right off the bat, if we need money out of our 401k before we're 15 and a half, we have an emergency, our, our kid is in the hospital, you know, something happens, we need a new car, whatever that might be we are going to be penalized and then also taxed on that money. But wow. do, you, do you have a question? Yeah, so I was just quickly thinking like, um, so a hundred thousand dollars, let's just say for simple math, if I want to take a hundred thousand dollars out, which is kind of rightfully mine, cause I was allocating money towards it for all those years. Um, if I want to take it out before that, I'm going to see 40% of it just immediately vanish. So I'm down to 60,000. You are. There are some very, there are a very few situations where you can pull it out without that penalty. Yeah. But yeah. honestly, with the the parameters around those are so strict that sure, yes, you could, but those are very few and far between to be yeah. able to actually get that without it. And then you're still being taxed on top of it anyways. So wow. yes. okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So could you take a guess? At what percentage of people pull money out of their 401k before 59 and a half? I mean, I would assume not a lot because everybody knows about, well, you have to wait till retirement age. Like we, that's been pounded into our head. And uh, on top of that, if you are going to face this penalty, I would assume maybe 20% at most. Hmm. That's a pretty good guess. It's actually a, a pretty low guess because it's actually over 80% of people oh, pull money. I know. I know. When I heard this, I was like, what? There's no way for people, especially, I mean, think of COVID. So many people were out of jobs. That was their savings. That was all that they had. And they yeah. had to pull money yeah. out because people are losing jobs. This was even actually before COVID, these numbers, it's actually increased. Um, I think it's actually at 92% now of oh, people wow. are pulling out. It's, it's insane. But you know what? The government loves this. They love it because they're getting to pull the tax and the penalty from people who didn't have any other plan. They just had the 401k. And so they're, the, the IRS, the government is getting that money sooner and they love it. So this, this unfortunately is what happens when we have a plan that is very constrictive on how we can use it. Yeah. Um, but on the flip side of that, you know, there's the 59 and a half rule. What if, you know, we had other, other income coming in, we had maybe real estate, maybe some royalties, maybe we had other money coming in and we're like, 
you know, I don't want to pull money from my 401k. It's grown. I want to let it grow some more. Then we get to this 73 RMD and RMD stands for required minimum distribution. Now this used to up until last year, this used to be age 72. It got moved to age 73. But what this says is if we do not take a required minimum do distribution by age 73, we're going to have a penalty okay. up until. And so, so right now, this RMD, this is a 25% penalty. If we do not take our required minimum distribution, we're going to be penalized 25%. Sure. Up until sure. last year, it was actually 50%. Now, what this tells me is that since they're reducing the penalty, unfortunately, when we think about it, when we think about taxes, in the future, do you think taxes are going to stay the same, go down, or go up? Well, I mean, the, the amount of government debt we have is it's scary, and it's only going to get worse. Um, and so I can't imagine a life where taxes are actually going to be coming lower. Right, exactly. And so taxes in the future are at an unknown tax rate. We're not sure. But by them reducing this penalty, what it tells us is it means our taxes are pretty much guaranteed to be going up, yeah. if not going up astronomically hmm. because of reducing that penalty. And so yeah. if, if taxes stay the same, if taxes were only 30%, we're looking at 55% of our money gone just because we weren't ready to retire yet. Maybe we took a loss in the market. We wanted to let that money grow some more before we took some. And sorry, you don't get to, we're going to be penalizing you and you still are going to have to pay taxes on that money. So yeah. those are the two big rules around the 401k, that 59 and a half and that 73 required minimum distribution. But what happens if we're right at retirement age, we're 65, we want to start pulling money out of that account. Taxes in the future, like we just said, taxes are probably going to be going up. So instead of paying taxes at a lower, which actually historically we're at an 80 year low on tax rates. I know people are always saying, oh my goodness, taxes are so much. We're paying so much in taxes. Historically, we're at an 80 year low in our taxes, even especially with there was the 2017 tax and jobs, um, tax cut and jobs act where yeah. they actually reduced our taxes even more. And if the government does nothing, by 2025, our taxes will increase because that will be the time frame of that that act that was put into place. Yeah. So the government doesn't have to do anything and taxes will be going up in 2025. And so unfortunately, this is what most people's whole financial plan is. Like yeah. I've got my 401k, it's gonna be great. My I'm getting free money now. I'm saving for retirement. My taxes are gonna be less in the future. But when we look at that as well, right now, a lot of people are parents. We're able to yeah. write our kids off. We're getting a tax deduction there. We're owning a home. We're able to, to deduct part of that mortgage on our taxes. There are tax savings that we have now that we actually get to keep that we won't get to have in the future. And so taxes are actually going to be more in the future, even if they didn't even raise taxes just because we're not getting those deductions that we're currently relying on now. And don't you think we'd want the most tax savings in the future when we're no longer creating an income versus now when we can work more, our body can actually handle the yeah. stress of working more and, and can physically do that versus in the future when we want to enjoy retirement, right? Yeah. I, there, there's so many things that are going through my head right now. Um, yeah. I think, you know, a few things. One, I think you know this, but a lot of people may not know this. I, I spend a lot of time working with uh, real estate investors. Uh, cause that's where I, I, I spent a lot of my life now. Um, and nearly all of the real estate investors, the times when they don't want to invest is because they consider a real estate investment too illiquid. And most of my real estate investments are only three to five years. So for my investors who are nearly all accredited investors to consider a real estate investment too illiquid. Now this makes a lot of sense when I see that 80% on the screen there of people accessing their retirement accounts before the allowable age of 59 and a half, which then suggests to me that I really need to find an alternative vehicle, not just for myself, but hopefully for other investors that allows them to have more liquidity, probably have less risk and hopefully more return. I know that's the, you know, the, the holy grail. If we can hit all three of those things, fantastic. 
Um, right. But at least providing more liquidity and probably more protection for my investors will make them more financially sound. Right. Exactly. Absolutely agree. Yeah. And honestly, that is what we do because, you know, there's 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 the common things that people invest in, you know, 401ks, IRAs, yeah. Roth IRAs. Yeah. And, you know, for the Roth IRAs where we're not having to pay those taxes, there is an income limit. You know, if you make too much money, you can't put money in them. Yeah. And so there are definitely different tools and resources out there that the wealthy are using that they've utilized. They've they've leveraged their time and their money to find these tools yeah. that we actually teach our clients about specific to those clients needs, because, you know, not everyone's in the same place financially currently. And not everyone has the same financial destination that they're working towards. And so being able to see, okay, here's all of the different resources that we have. What's that best fit? And yeah. for a lot of people, unfortunately, the 401k isn't always the best fit to help them reach their financial goals, especially with the fact that they can lose money in the market and they are going to be taxed on it. Like we don't pay taxes right now on that 401k. We are absolutely having to pay taxes in the future on it. And taxes are going to be going up. I mean, we're over $30 trillion in debt and that's on the rise. You can look at it historically. Like we're having that and then not even that, even social security, it's set to run out of money, I think by 2034. And so how do they get more money for that? <laughs> You're gonna be raising taxes. So it's, yeah, it, it's not a good situation that people don't really realize that they're putting themselves in. Yeah, um, so and I mean- I guess, how did a 401k come about then? Because I see, what, I know there used to be private pension plans and companies used to really promote that. And I think GE and Procter & Gamble, where I came from, really prided themselves on that. I know in yeah. my working years, that has been you know a pipe dream to ever have something like that. So how did this all come about? Absolutely. That's a great question. So back in 1978, Taxes, when we look at taxes, now the wealthy, again, they leverage, they leverage that the money that they have, they leverage that to find the people who can find the answers for them. Sure. And ultimately, 1978, taxes, we can see tax year 1978, they had to file in 1979. We can see that the wealthy were paying 70% in taxes. Wow. I can tell you that they did not want to pay 70% in taxes. And they knew that taxes had to be coming down. So they were like, what if there was a way that we could defer paying taxes? What if we could pay taxes at a later date? And thus in 1978 is when the, uh, the 401k was invented. And so through that, these companies were able to say, okay, instead of us paying you now and you being taxed at 70%, we'll delay paying you. And then you'll just pay taxes at that point. And you can look up the rates of how much people were able to put in. They were put, able to put in a ton more money inside of their 401k because it was created for the wealthy. Yeah. And then companies realized, hey, instead of us providing pension plans, instead of us paying, you know, somebody gives 40 years of their life, they were loyal to us. Instead of us having that loyal employee and then paying them for the rest of their life when they retire, we can have this contribution plan where people can put their own money we can also put money in there as a benefit and use that as a tax write-off for the business. And then they can fund their own retirements instead of us having to pay their entire retirement. And so companies really liked that idea, which is unfortunate for any employee who has that 401k because they don't have that guaranteed income for the rest of their lives. Now they have to provide it on their own. And most people, if we look up how much is inside the average 401k, how much in average 401k we're looking at age 65 people getting right about ready to retire the average 401k only has two hundred seventy nine thousand dollars in there oh, if wow. someone's used to making just fifty thousand dollars you know that's five years let's say they earned a little bit maybe that's six years of retirement this is why we see so many people having to go back to work in their 70s you think those older, elderly Walmart greeters want to be there? No, they have to be there. They have to supplement their income somehow. So Dear it's God. it's crazy how how underfunded, like if these were really truly for retirement, like there would be so much more in them. And this yeah. is the average. 
the median out of everyone who has a 401k, the very middle person who's age 65 only has $87,000. That means this program is failing for sure half of all Americans, but really much more than just half to be able to fund their retirements. It, it's just not happening. Yeah. I mean, hell, if I think about it, let's say I hit 65. And I now want to live off of that. Yes, I might be receiving some social security benefits, but I mean, candidly for, for us, or uh, for maybe probably anybody under 45 or 50, social security may not be around or being real. Yeah. Um, but let's assume you're still getting that social security benefit and I'm at 65 now. If I'm supplementing that, uh, if I say on the, let's give the benefit of the average 401k, not the median, even though that's the majority of Americans. The four percent rule. Uh, what is that? Four percent on two eighty is. Oh, I don't know. Is that like twelve thousand dollars or something like that? Um, yeah. Thank God you have a calculator. Yeah. Times. What did you say? Four percent. So we're yeah. looking at eleven thousand. Yeah. Okay. That we're still gonna yeah. have to pay taxes on. Like. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. A whopping ten percent at least on that one. It's so low, but. Um, okay. So you're really taking home ten thousand and whatever social security is. I don't know a place anywhere in the United States now that I could actually live off of that. Exactly. And, and okay. that's like okay. the sad reality of the fact that most people aren't able to retire. They're not, they're having to continue working. Wow. Okay. I mean, that's, yeah. it's, that's um, upsetting. Uh, might be one word, um, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> at least again, for you and I, we're not, close to retirement age, um, or right. how deemed per the government retirement age. I'd, I'd love to retire now. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I, I guess there has to be a solution then, right. For, for people longer term. Absolutely. And, and there, there are so many solutions that are out there. Most people have never sat down with a financial professional who can actually see, okay, here's where you are now. Here's where you want to be, depending on you know your goals. If you have kids, do you want yeah. to send them to college? What, what are the goals that you have in your life? Let's put a plan in place to make sure that you reach those goals within your time frame. And most people, unfortunately, are just relying on their 401k because that's what their parents told them to do. That's what yeah. their coworkers are telling them to do. But really, when we look at it, we want to be getting help from people who are already in the position that we want to be in. Yeah. And that's why... So, so important to be working with a financial professional that a can figure out what's going on in your life, determine what your financial needs are for the future and be able to show you exactly how to do that because that's what we do all day long. That's yeah. what, that's what we're able to buy the tools that are available that honestly, most companies won't even talk to you about because a lot of them are very low profit products for the companies and very high profit products for the clients. Yeah. So they're not even talking about them, unless really you mention them by name, you know exactly what you're looking for because they don't make any money off of it. And yeah. financial institutions, they want to make money off of you. Banks, like I used to work in banking and I realized very quickly through that, that, you know, banks are a business and their inventory is money. Yeah. So the more money you have, the more money they can then make. And I was not okay with the practices that they were, that they were using. And I was like, okay, I have to find something else. I can, I cannot get behind this mm -hmm. because it wasn't for the clients. It wasn't really helping them to reach their financial goals. And so I, that's why I'm so, so thankful I found this because we've been able to help so many families take the money that they were already putting aside. They were already putting it towards savings without costing them anything to be able to show them the better tools and resources that they can use for their specific situation. There's no one size fits all. Everybody has to have this plan. And like, if you ever hear somebody saying, oh, everyone has to have this, they don't really know what they're talking about because not everybody has to have this one specific plan because your your goals may be different. It's like, if you have a GPS, you're trying to drive somewhere. Mm -hmm. You have to know two things, where you are now and where you want to be, right? Mm -hmm. If I try to give you directions to the store based off of how I get to the store from my house, you're probably not going to end up at the store, yeah. right? Because yeah. I have different directions than you would take. But that's what most people are just like, oh, everyone has to have this one thing and everyone's good. No, there, there's probably something different for your situation. There's probably a way to structure something that's going to be better for you to reach your goals. And so that's what we help people do. 
Wow. So, I mean, first off, this is extremely helpful. I guess, um, what are the things do you have there? I, I know you kind of had a, an idea of a deck that you wanted to share. What are the you know, nuggets could I pull from you here? So I've learned a few things here that I'll recite. One, the 401k was created back in the 70s um, and it is really designed to help the, the rich who were getting a 70% tax bracket delay paying taxes on their earned income. Uh, and based on the amount of money that was allowed to be put in at that point in time, which was like 50000 or whatever it might be, it was definitely not designed for the ordinary human. It was at some point in time in later history that it morphed into being the, the retirement plan of choice for employers to offer to their employees. Um, and now it's just been kind of, you know, as our parents always tell us, like, if, if somebody else is doing it or you're going to do it too, but yet we are <laughs> doing that with a 401k. Um and then I think you hit on the the tax parts of you're you're gonna face ordinary income taxes. Um, yeah. What other things? What other things am I missing? Yeah, I feel like really the big thing is really sitting down with someone and figuring out. Okay, here's here's what's going on currently with my finances, and based off of these, like, what do I really want out of life? You know, I feel like a lot of people aren't living in the home that they would, would want to be living in for us their lives. They're not living the lifestyle, but that's what they really want. And so really figuring out, like most people have given up on their dreams of the things that they want in life because they've limited their dreams down to their income that they're getting from their job. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's their lot in life and that's what they're going to do or they're living for the weekend. And so we really help people really to figure out, okay, what are those dreams that I used to have? that I maybe no longer have anymore or have always been there, but it's like, oh, if, if I win the lottery, then I'll be able to. And and for most people, you know, you're never going to win the lottery. Yeah. Um, and so so really those those are probably really my biggest things of really getting with somebody to figure out and it and it can be daunting, which is why I, I love what we do is because it we take a very educational approach to it. Yeah. We're never gonna tell someone, how dare you do this or you have to do this, like, hey, Here's what you're doing now. Here's how it works. Here's yeah. something that I would suggest that would help you reach your goals. Here's how it works. You now have the facts to make a decision on if you want to change something or do something different. Yeah. Um, and, and each person's situation is different. Like mm -hmm. I, I helped recently a client save over $600,000 just by making a tweak with what he was doing with his finances because hmm. he wanted to be a debt-free homeowner. He wanted to, to make sure that his family was taken care of. And so finding those, okay, here's what you want to do. How can we get there faster? How we, can we save you more money? How can we put more money back in your pocket? And, and really determining what those things are. Um, I mean, we could get into, okay, here's the entire history of the 401k. And here's exactly how it works. And here's, you know, not even to the fees. Like this isn't even going over the fees. Most people have 12 to 17 different fees that are coming out of their account, which is about 1% to 3%. Yeah. Whether your account has earned money or lost money that you're having to pay for somebody to manage your 401k that maybe they lost you money in. Like, mm -hmm. how, how can we minimize? How can we take those out? How can we make sure that your money is working harder for you than you have to work for it and is able to sustain you for the rest of your life moving forward once you're ready to retire and you hit that, I need this amount of money to retire. Okay, you can hit this by this age by doing X, Y, Z. And like yep. you have that exact roadmap of what you need to be doing. Um, so, I mean, we, we could hash this to death and go into all the nitty gritty. And I some people who have that, you know, engineer type mindset, that analytical, like, okay, how exactly does this work? And I'm more than happy to go through it. Yeah. But this is just kind of like that high level overview, how it was invented, how it works, what we can look forward to in the future and what we need to plan for to make sure that we're, we don't get to 65 and think, oh, I have, you know, a million dollars. I get to keep that million dollars in retirement. Well, no, we're going to be taxed on that. You know, it, it's not about how much money we have. It's how much we get to keep. That's yep. the big, the, yep. that's most important. You um, know, so, yeah. that actually just kind of sparked something because I remember when you were educating me on this, um, I think you showed me like a, a money chimp calculator or something like that. Okay. And yep. I, I, because I, I was saying, well, hey, I'm getting a employer match on my 401k. And that employer match, you know, that alone is similar to, you know, one of the reasons you highlighted originally of why people do a 401k, that alone is why I should be doing this. Um, but then yeah. I think you had a explanation 
Um, oh, and I see you're pulling that up. So let me put that on the screen so people can see it. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Let me, uh, sorry, I got, need to restructure this. So that, that's a great, that's a great point that you're going across, Dan. So uh, most people, when they think of, oh, you know, getting that free money, like if I'm, if I'm doing something else aside from my 401k, like I'm missing out on that free money that my company yeah. was going to give me, like I'm missing out on that benefit. But if it was really a benefit, they would just give it to me. I wouldn't have to do something for them to then give it to me. Sure. Um, so sure. If, we, if we look at the 401k, we say, okay. You know, if I'm making a hundred thousand dollars, just for easy math, if I'm making a hundred thousand dollars, and my company is going to match me up to six percent, so six percent of a hundred thousand is six thousand. So let's say yearly, I'm putting in six thousand dollars to get the match, and they're matching me six thousand dollars. Let's say I'm thirty-five, and we've got yep. thirty years till retirement, so we want to retire at sixty-five. Yep. Uh, what's yep. going to happen is this money is going to be invested against things like stocks that are going to get. Uh, and this is a whole different subject, but going versus average versus actual, yeah. um, a lot of companies yeah. like, uh, S and P 500 is a very common, yeah. um, yeah. index fund that people will invest into and they'll say, Oh, the S and P 500 is averaging 10%. It's averaging 12%, 8%, whatever. What it's averaging is not what it's actually doing. Mm -hmm. And what it's actually doing, and this has actually changed as of this past year, but I'll still run it at this higher. So it was doing when it's actually all said and done, what you were actually getting was a compounded rate of 5.2%. This has actually decreased since then. I think it's like five or it's 4.68, uh, I think. Damn. But we'll just say that it's getting 5.2, which is like, oh my goodness, this is being amazing. This is over and above, like this is best case scenario. Wow. So if wow. we're just putting this in, we're setting this aside for retirement, we're, we're going to look at having over $800,000 yeah. in retirement. Yeah which sounds like great. Oh my goodness, $800,000. I'm almost at a million just from putting in my amount and getting that match through my company. Yeah. Yeah. But what happens is when we get ready to retire, we can't be as risky. We have to be more conservative with that, um, with how we're put it, how our money is growing. And so we're generally only getting about a 2% rate of return. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be much more conservative. And so let's just say we want to live for the next 20 years. Like, obviously, I hope I live much longer, but if we're retiring at 65, yeah. we plan on dying by 85. Like, this is kind of looking at, you know, best case scenario, what we're looking at. Yeah. Um, yeah. Taxes are at just 25%. We're going to calculate it. And we can see we, if we're used to, again, we're, we're used to making $100,000. We go to retire. If we're going to just be living, if we want this to last that total of 20 years, we could only pull out $52,000 a year, but we're going to be taxed on it. So we're really only living off of 39,000. Wow. That's all we have. So what a decrease. And that this is the problem that most people have. Most people work 40 years of their life, only tire on 40% of their income. And that's matching up with the numbers there. 40%, they're making a hundred thousand. They're not making that anymore in retirement. And I don't want that for people. So one of the ways that we can we can do that is by helping them get a higher rate of return. And there's a bunch of different products that offer this. I mean, again, it just depends on the situation of somebody. But the problem with it is that you're not getting that employer match anymore, yep. which, is, which is a lot of people a big problem. Oh my goodness, I'm losing out on that match. You know, I'm, I'm not going to get. I'm not going to be where I was. So just remembering, you know, we're 35. We've got 30 years till retirement. Um, we started at 860,000. So that's if we were going to do it with the 401k, best case scenario, everything's going right. This is what we'd have. Uh, since we're doing a different product, this actually has guarantees. We're looking at an 8.2%. Now this is being extremely conservative. We have accounts that are doing much more than this, but this is being extremely conservative on how much we're earning interest in these. Yeah. Um, so we were at 868,000. If we calculate this, oh man, we didn't have that match. We're at, we don't have as much money now, which sounds like, oh my goodness, like this isn't that great. I don't have as much money and it's not going to last as long. Sure. But the beauty sure. of this is that since we don't have to, our, our money is not at any market loss. We cannot lose our money. Okay. So it can only go up. It can never go down. Exactly. Yeah. So it can never, it, it can never go down. You are guaranteed to have your money. Your money is just going to continually grow. Yep. Um, I like to equate it as uh, investing in like, have you, have you ever been in an elevator? Yes. Right. Absolutely. So if you have a building that's a hundred stories and you go into an elevator, 
If you push 100, you know that eventually you're going to get to the 100th floor, yep. right? Because the elevator is working on an upward trajectory. Yep. Versus when we invest our money, and that, that's how these accounts work. It is going to keep going up. You know, you may have to stop at a couple of floors. You may have to stop at a lot of floors, but your money, it's going to continually going up. Yep. Versus when we invest in like the stocks where it's going to go up and down with the market, mm-hmm. it's like jumping into an elevator that's going to erratically go to floor 20 and then floor five and then floor 18 and then 23. And like, it's all over the place. And you're like, yeah. I don't even know if I'm ever going to get there. And if you search like how, when would you reach the, reach the hundredth floor? It says you're never going to get there. Sure. You're never going to reach that if you're in an elevator like that. But that's how most people are investing their money. And so we completely eliminate all of those losses. We have that elevator-like guarantees where you may have to stop at a floor, but it's going to keep going up as time goes on. Uh, So let's say, again, we only want 20 years just so that it's it's apples to apples of the same time. Uh, But the beauty in this is, A, we're getting guarantees in our money. It's only going up. But we also don't have to pay taxes on that. So instead of having to pay 25% in taxes, we don't have to pay taxes. So even though we have less money, we're able to sustain that higher rate of return. And again, this is being very conservative. So instead of $39,000 in retirement per year that we could take out, we can now take out almost seven, we can take out $72,000 completely tax-free. So almost 2x more. And and so a few thoughts here, because this is crazy. Um, The first is that's seventy two thousand or seventy three thousand dollars a year. Is mm-hmm. that able to be like just continued to be recycled? Like, am I ever at risk of running out of that principal balance being in there, or not? So that's a great question. So there's different ways to structure these accounts. There's ways that we can pull out much more than this. There's way can, we we can pull out less. The way that we structure them is to be able to consistently just live off of the interest. Okay. So you're never touching that nest egg. So this this calculator is a great just it's a tool to just show you what it looks like. It's not exactly what it would look like because honestly yeah. we're getting better interest rates. I like to show people how they can live off of eight percent of the growth. We get them to where they can consistently live off of the interest, yeah. never touch their nest egg, be able to pass that on for generational wealth completely change their family's lives for as for forever to completely change their last name forever when it comes to money and, and how they're able to, to help their next generation uh, move forward in life. With and, so and so the tax rate part then, so this is pretty much like a Roth then that we're talking about or how different is different is this then from a Roth since I know a Roth, we pay the taxes now, which I agree on always paying the taxes first because we never know what taxes are going to be. But is this pretty much a Roth here or something a little bit different? Because I know a Roth has that variability of that elevator analogy you were talking about. Yeah, that's a great question. So this is definitely structured like a Roth in the fact that you don't have to pay taxes on the back end. So it's no taxes on the end. However, it does have those guarantees. So this this is known also as the rich man's Roth, because again, Mm -hmm. people who are making too much money, they can't have a Roth IRA, but it has those guarantees in place which le- it's on the paperwork. Like it says guaranteed no less than 0%. And there's yeah. different ones that have a small amount that it's never just zero. It's a percentage that you're always at least guaranteed to get. Again, yeah. it just depends on the family's needs and, and what they what their future goals are. Uh, but these can be structured in so many different ways to guarantee that you're, they're never going to lose their money. Their money's only going up. They're able to reach their financial goals so much faster because they're not reliant on a market that's going to go up and down. Because when we look at it again, those, that average versus actual, when our money goes down, that whole amount goes down. And so if you have, you know, let's say you had a hundred dollars invested in something and the market went up 50%. Great. It went down 50%. Okay. You 50, 50, that's zero. So people would, the financial companies, I feel like this is the biggest lie that finance companies will say, Oh, actually look at it if you had a hundred dollars it went up 50 percent. you now have 150 if that 50 150 dollars went down 50 percent, you now only have 75 dollars. so in actuality your account lost 25 percent, not that zero percent that finance companies can legally tell you your account averaged so this this just works to just show you how how much your money can grow much faster because you're never having to claw your way back up to even because your money is guaranteed to never lose anything. 
So, wow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this has been incredibly helpful. Um, and so I now understand, all right, it's kind of like a Roth, but it's a rich man's Roth. If it's a rich man's Roth, does that mean only rich people should be getting into this? Or what do you think is really the, the, the real threshold in order to qualify to get into something like this? Yeah. I mean, these accounts, like, honestly, I've got four kids. I've started these accounts for my children, like a hundred bucks is really all you need to start. Wow. Now I would recommend, wow. you know, setting aside more, especially as we get older, the, the biggest, the biggest benefit that we have as far as money goes, it's not even the dollar amount, it's time. Yeah. How much time do we have to let that money compound and grow? My children, since they're so young, they have so much more time. We can start with so much smaller amounts and they're going to be millionaires. Yeah. Whereas for us, yeah. we do need to be putting money inside of there. I mean, you definitely can still start at $100. I would hope that somebody could set aside more than $100 a month to be able to utilize this really to the fullest benefit. But I mean, the, really, we can start with $100. Again, I would do much more. Like someone in their 30s should be doing about $500. I know some, yeah. for some people, that's a lot. Some people are like, oh, that's nothing. Um, so it, it really just depends on what your financial goals are. If you're somebody who only wants you know, $50,000 a year in retirement, like you're going to be looking at much less versus someone who wants $500,000 a year in retirement, you know? This is crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, I mean, hey, I, I don't want to eat up more of your time. I know we were in way over here and I know you've got other people to meet with. So um, I don't want to keep chewing that up. Uh, but thank you so much for it. I guess if there was like one final takeaway that you think would be most important for people to understand in regards to a 401k, um, what would that be? Oh man, I feel like the one takeaway I would have to say is your 401k is if you look in the paperwork, you have to look a little bit to find it, but it's called, it says FBO. It says for benefit of, and it will have your name. It doesn't say you're the owner because you're not, you're not the owner of your 401k. So having knowing, and so the governments on in other countries have actually pilfered different employees, 401ks, similar to their, whatever that country was offering, have taken money from it to fund their own retirement plans for the community, for the less fortunate. Wow. So, I mean, could you imagine, which, I mean, you could just search it, you find it online, but other countries have done this. Could you imagine saving a million dollars, two million dollars, and the government says, oh, you saved too much money, we're going to take some of that and give it to the people who didn't plan ahead, who didn't save anything. Like, oh my goodness, I planned ahead. How dare you take my money? But it really wasn't our money because we were, we, we said, Hey, I'm going to, um, I'll get paid later. That's a tax code section 401k, yeah. so the tax code is the government's money, but it's for our benefit if we actually are allowed to use it at that time. So yeah. just like, there's so much around that. I mean, that's even a whole different training, but like really, truly <laughs> having something that's your own you have control over is so important. Like, you know, if you had, you know, if, if I had an ex-boyfriend and we had a, an account together, I would want to make sure that I have all that money out of that account because I don't yeah. know what he's going to do. With it. Like, yeah. no, I don't want to, I, I don't know what, what's going to happen there. And so making sure that you have control over your own money versus if the government decides to change their taxes, sorry, you're in that. You just have to accept it now. So oh that's, that's very scary uh, once people realize that. I mean, that is, I mean, yes, I mean, this, this scares the hell out of me. You know, they always say like, what you don't know can't hurt you. I think what you don't know can't hurt you. Just, just by that FBO um, comment there, like that is crazy. Um, but wow. Okay. So, I mean, you've, you've helped me better understand a 401k. And like I said, I know at the start you, you did like out of a scale of one to 10, how knowledgeable. And I know I used to be you know closer to a one. Now I'm, I'm probably sitting at that eight or nine because it, I've taken a lot of years of education and a lot of money lost. Um, but I'm hoping for the people that will eventually lesson. watch this, they're going to be able to move at least from like a one or two into maybe a five or a six um, mm -hmm. and understand that uh, maybe just because everybody else is doing it, it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Um, right. That's I'm Well, if this. everyone else was doing it, everyone would be millionaires. I don't know anybody. I've been doing this for over a decade. I don't know anybody who's retired comfortably from their 401k. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you I lost 40% on my 401k just two years ago. So uh, I uh, wish I wasn't in that. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but yeah. wow. All right. So, so Brianna, if, if people want to reach out to you, what's the best way uh, for them to get in contact with you? Um, honestly, I mean, right now, my biggest thing, I'm on TikTok right now. You can go follow me at Brianna Z Finance. Um, that's probably the best way to get a hold Sweet. of me. I do a lot of things like this on a much smaller scale, shorter, going through exactly how things work. Um, but there's there's links on there to be able to get a hold, get in touch with me. Um, if you want to jump on a meeting, we can absolutely go through and see what you're doing now, where yeah. your financial, where, where you want to be in the future and see how we can get there, honestly, faster than you probably could, because there's some ways that we can find some extra money, make sure your money is actually doing what you want it to be doing. Um, so that that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Okay. Well, very cool. I, I like it. Um, and hey, thank you so much for this. It really, this is uh, incredibly helpful and uh, it, I really do appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. Thank you, sure we'll Dan. This has been great. Uh, this has been great. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, take care. Have a good one. All right. You Bye. too. Bye-bye. <laughs>